All right, ladies and gentlemen, 1980 brought you Friday the 13th. 1981 brought you Friday the 13th, Part 2, which is very uninspirably named. Yet, us fans like to call that Baghead Jason. Well, have you, are you ready for Friday the 13th, Part 3, 3D? Or better known as the one with that weird toilet scene, and where Freddy get, or Jason gets his look. Freddy. He doesn't come in until the mid-80s. Any case, here we have, yet again, the unkillable, indestructible Jason coming back to terrorize a new group of, they're not campers, there's no camp this time, they are going to a vacation house sort of a thing, and, you know, violence ensues. But if you look at this film, it almost feels like the 3D elements are stacked on. I did try to watch it in 3D, and I could not. I, I just, I, I couldn't do it. Uh, there's like a sequence there where a snake jumps out at you, a pole gets stuck in your face, and a TV antenna gets really close to your nose in 3D. And then there's... There's, in that sequence, there's a dude using the toilet. And it's like, come on, he didn't even wipe. Ooh, itchy ear. It's going to drive me nuts. Okay. But here's the thing about this film. With the exception of uh, Larry Zerner, I believe it is, who you will know in the film as the kind of fat guy playing low esteem with the uh, the fro, he, he's he's one of my brother Jews, I think. In any case, being a low self-esteem with a, a white man fro, all the characters in this film are pretty much meh. The main characters. There's a group of main campers who serve as sort of the the casualty fodder for uh, Mr. Voorhees there. And, yeah, very few of them stand out, much like in the previous movie. You've got so many characters thrust into this movie, it's hard to keep track of who is who and who's dating who and who wants to bang who and what's going on. And sadly, some of the best characters in this film, there's a, a gang of three bikers who show up in the beginning, and they don't, they don't hold out through most of the movie. So, you know, they're not, they're not major players. They, they don't... Uh, take place in the mayhem all that much and you're like gee these are the characters I can remember I also remember low self-esteem man and then there's a bunch of I couldn't even count them I don't know who these people are so when you look at this film that's one of those things you kind of have to realize is that yes it is it's a yeah, it's a pretty good horror movie compared to a lot of our modern PG-13 horror movies our modern PG-13 horror movies have more memorable characters. That's true. I could look at any horror movie I've seen in quite some time, be like, except for Animal Creation, be like, yes, there's that girl, that girl, and that person, and, that, and I could pick out these characters. In this movie, I can't remember who's who, because the characters are too hard to distinguish from each other. They are very much slapped together. And to be flatly honest with you, much like with Friday the 13th Part 2, it feels like this maybe wasn't originally a Jason movie, but it became a Jason. But Jason was written in as the uh, antagonist to make that movie work. And I mean, this is this is sort of furthered by the fact that they refer to him as an axe murderer. And I don't really think an axe has ever been his main weapon. He's generally thought of as the machete-wielding maniac. So there's that. But as I say, when you look at this film... Jason uh, Voorhees becomes even more like Michael Myers, switching his baghead look for a hockey mask, which is at least the same color as the Myers mask. This is why I refer to these two particular movies as uh, the eunuch killers. When you think about it, you have a killer who's penetrating, who is essentially a societal eunuch. Jason, because he's ugly, and Michael Myers, because he is mentally damaged. We never really get a good look at his face. But that's, that's why these movies are extremely similar. The difference being that I think the Friday the 13th does it with a little better style. 
I haven't seen all of the Halloween films. I'm just making the statement that by the third movie, Voorhees is pretty much invincible. He is hard to take down. You hit him and you hit him and you hit him and now now we sort of sort of got the idea like why isn't somebody doesn't just take an axe to this dude? Because if you took an axe to him, it might not work. Anyway, Friday the 13th Part 3 in the 3D or Jason gets his look is a watch. Not in 3D. We'll give you a headache in 3D. I recommend skipping it. Anyway, that's my opinion. I'd love to hear yours down in the comments below. I'm Richard Dan.